Hello everyone, and welcome back. I want to show you a little bit of an update on the CF-19. Uh, the last time it was featured on this channel, it had neither a battery or a hard drive caddy, rendering it essentially useless. However, now, as you might be able to tell by the flashing standby light, and the way that it is not currently plugged in, I have a battery in it. I also have a hard drive caddy in it, and it's equipped with a 500 gigabyte Seagate conventional spinning hard drive that I had laying around. As you can see, there is the hard drive caddy installed properly, and here is our battery. This is one of the um, hazardous climate batteries. It was the cheapest one I could find. I think it's about 25 bucks, brand new. Um, seems to hold the charge very well, around, oh, six hours or maybe a little more, with the screen brightness most of the way up and doing moderate tasks. So that's what I would consider to be very good. You'll also notice that I attached a uh, shoulder strap to the machine. This is handy because I can sling it over my shoulder and use it kind of, well, treat it more like a shoulder bag type thing. Uh, makes it real nice if you're doing stuff where you need to use your hands and also want to be carrying this thing with you. Uh, that'll be real nice when I'm, say, traveling and unloading stuff out of vehicles. I can just sling this thing onto my shoulder and take other stuff with me as well. I don't have to make a separate trip just for this little bugger, since it really doesn't weigh too much and doesn't get in the way of uh, movement. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'll show you what I'm running for an operating system. It is not Windows XP. I actually did try to load Windows XP on here, but I had a lot of issues with drivers and getting certain features to work, uh, mainly the touchscreen. I did not want to play nicely with the driver. It kept going out of calibration. Like, I'd calibrate it, and then every, I don't know, two or three minutes, it would go really out of whack and it'd start screwing everything up. And it was just behaving very strangely, kind of like it had a hardware issue. Um, but I don't think that's the case, because as you'll see here, Notice I have Linux Mint on here, and uh, the brightness is down. For some reason, it likes to turn the screen brightness down every time it comes back out of sleep. I don't know what the issue is there, but uh, it doesn't really bug me, because the, the screen brightness hotkeys on the front of the laptop do, in fact, work in Linux Mint. As you can see here, I've got the classic Toughbook wallpaper on there, at least the one I use on all of my Toughbooks. And... Uh, Yep, we are running off a of battery. Um, it's down a little bit. Yeah, we're at 63% battery. I've been using it all day, so that'll be plenty enough to get this thing, uh, get this video completed here. Um, I did install Docky on here, which is a handy little thing. Kind of looks like the uh, Mac OS X uh, system dock. So, yeah, I, I like that. It's just a neat little place where you can pin some stuff. I got a CPU monitor, clock, and other things down there. Um, I also installed a uh, internet radio. It's uh, inter what is it? Radio tray, I think it's called. Nice little program allows you to just play internet radio up from the system tray. Um, there's also another program on here that I have installed, which is super duper handy if I can find it. Uh, I need to set it up to start with the system. I haven't done that yet. There's actually quite a few things I need to set up to start with the system. Let me see, what would it be under? Ooh, where are we here? Ah, here we go. Great terminal, I don't know if that's how I'm, if I'm pronouncing that correct or not, but uh, what this does is it really should start up with the system, but you can just press F12 and boom, there's a terminal, press F12 again, terminal's gone. Super, super handy in Linux because I mean, if, if anybody, if you're familiar with Linux, you uh, you know that you need to use the terminal pretty often. I prefer installing stuff via the terminal when possible. It's just simple. You run a line of code and uh, it installs your program. Um, but it's handy there for configuring all sorts of doodads and things. So that's good to have. Uh, good to have that running. I also configured it so there's a button for showing the on-screen keyboard, which is necessary if you're running it in tablet mode. Um, I will need to calibrate the touch screen here each time you run the machine, or every time you reboot, because uh, you'll notice here the touch screen is hideously out of whack. 
Uh, the issue, the reason I need to recalibrate it each time is because it doesn't really save your calibration settings unless you copy the calibration settings into a specific uh, configuration file. Uh, it's somewhere for um, the Xorg configuration stuff. I haven't uh, haven't uh, dove in into that yet, um, but eventually I'll get that set up too. Linux is, although I've been using it for about four years on various systems, it is still somewhat alien to me, and I have a lot more experience with Windows. It's just configuring things through text editors is never really my forte. I'll get it eventually, probably with the help of some various YouTube videos and things. Um, one issue I have had with this machine is the Wi-Fi on it. Seems to be a little bit flaky in Linux Mint. Um, like It works most of the time, but sometimes you'll boot it and it'll only show one of the access points in my house or only show the 5 gigahertz band. Um, which is kind of odd. I'm not sure why it does that. If anybody has some input on what might be causing that, please leave leave a comment down in the comment section below because that'd be really cool to know a way to fix that. I don't think it's a hardware issue. I never had that problem uh, before. It only seems to be when you come out of sleep mode that it does it, and probably only one every ten or so times that you do it. Uh, most of the time, everything just works fine. Um, but let's go ahead and go to, let's see, I think it's under administration, and then calibrate touchscreen. I did have to install a package. Um, I forget what the name of the package is. Uh, and X input underscore, or X input dash calibrator is uh, the program for calibrating the touchscreen. Super, super handy to have, and here it gives you this uh, block of code. You're supposed to copy and paste, uh, looks like this here, into the configuration. Uh, let's see, it's uh, etc x11 xorg xorg.conf.d slash 99 dash calibration dot conf. Uh, yeah, so you're supposed to copy that into that calibration uh, configuration file, and then it, hopefully it'll remember your settings each time. Um, but aside from that, it doesn't actually go out of whack while you're using it, so that is good. The touchscreen seems perfectly reliable in and uh, not Windows in Linux Mint, so it is perfectly usable in there. Um, I'm probably just going to keep Linux on this machine because it's really not set out and not cut out for running anything much more than Windows XP. And everybody knows Windows XP is hideously outdated. Also, it's no longer supported. So Linux Mint, this is uh, Linux Mint 18. It seems to be the best option for this. It runs okay. It's not like this. This thing is no speed demon. This is a Mark 1. It's running a 1.06 gigahertz core duo, not even a core 2 duo, it's a core duo. I do have 4 gigs of RAM in it, however, so that is pretty good as far as these things come, although it only recognizes, I think, 3.2 gigs of the 4 gigs. Um, so what would really probably be wise is to swap one of the sticks, uh, one of the 2 gig sticks with 1 gig stick, so I can use that in something else, because it's really, it's only 200 meg that's really not going to make much of a difference. Plus, the system already doesn't use the 4 gigs with Linux Mint. So I'll probably end up swapping one of the RAM sticks, the easy one to get to, with a 1 gig stick. That just makes more sense to me anyway. Um, too bad I can't get a 1.5 gig stick. Um, but yeah, that, that wouldn't work. Uh, I'm not even sure if, I'm not sure if weird odd number... Uh, sticks of RAM exist like that. I don't think I've ever seen any. I don't believe they do. Um, probably some reasoning behind that, mainly because it'd be kind of stupid to make one of that configure one of that size. But um, anyway, off, off of that tangent here, yeah, this machine works pretty okay as long as you don't expect to be streaming like HD YouTube videos. This is going to get the job done, and it, so far it has for me. If I want to stream video, I use a different computer. This is meant to get work done, and only to get work done. I'm going to be editing database files on here. I'll be working on Word documents. 
I will mention that I have ordered a brand new, well, not brand new, but a new keyboard to replace this rubber mush board of a nasty thing. I am, I, I, it's painful for me to use it. I, I know a lot of people are really like, these are really highly sought after, these rubber keyboards, because they're just indestructible, apparently. I don't know, mine already has a split up in the top. I didn't do that to it, came with it. There's like a little uh, split under the F2 key. Doesn't look too indestructible to me. I'm, I worry about uh, poking holes in this just when I'm typing on it, because if, uh, if I hit the keys funny or something, because it feels like it might... I don't know, it's just, it's so, it feels so wrong to type on it. Just, it feels like you're typing on, like, some sort of dead animal or something. It's just awful. I don't even know how to do, convey how disgusting this thing feels to type on. Um, it works, but there is, like, zero feedback as to whether you actually press the key correctly or not. Because you can press the key, and sometimes it won't register, and other times it will. You have to press it, like, really firm, dead center to get them to register. You cannot type fast on this at all. And since, uh... One of the primary things I want to do with this is typing. Actually, the, the majority of the things I want to do with this are rely upon having a decent keyboard. It was a no-brainer for me to get the standard keyboard for this. I would have I would have uh, splurged and got the Emissive Backlight keyboard, uh, Backlit one, if it would have uh, been a little more affordable. Unfortunately, they run around $90, which is about as much money as I have in this thing anyway. I was able to get the standard keyboard for $14.00. Plus I had like eight bucks in eBay bucks or something, so I got I got it down to under seven dollars for the new keyboard. So I'm pretty darn pleased with that. Um, it'll probably have some wear and things on it because it's a used used keyboard. So I'll just clean it up good, stick it in here, and uh, should be perfectly acceptable then. But uh, yeah, that'll be nice whenever I get that keyboard in. I'm kind of counting down the minutes to when I can get that. But uh, I think I played some video the last time on here. It plays up to about 480p fine. Uh, if you full screen it, good luck. It starts to stutter pretty bad. Um, but I think it can play 360p full screen okay. 480p, not so much. It plays 480p shrunk down okay. If you try playing anything in HD, it's just going to die on you. Because this thing is not capable of doing it. I mean, it's so underpowered, it's unbelievable. But um, it works well for basic, basic tasks. Like, uh, let's try bringing up Wallpaper Abyss. You can see I'm having a very hard time. I'm having to think about this a lot when I'm typing. I also switched my uh, uh, search provider over to Google. It comes default Yahoo. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. There's a bunch of tutorials out there on how to do that, so I won't elaborate too much. Uh, when the keyboard comes in, I will make an update video on that, showing how to replace one of these. It's real simple. It's basically just take off four screws on the top, pry the old keyboard off, little panel underneath, you, pry, you uh, pull the three screws out of that, take it off, undo the ribbon cable, swap in the new keyboard, put everything back, and you're good to go. Uh, but I'll, I'll make a video on that anyway. It, it's, it's simple enough to where it really doesn't need one, and there are other videos showing how to do it, but yeah, it's nice to see the evolution of this little machine as it comes along. I still haven't decided if I want to paint this or not yet. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I, I've been thinking about doing kind of like a dark uh, matte metallic gray finish, uh, one of those, one of the Rust-Oleum finishes. I think it's called oil rubbed bronze or something. It's actually the same color I painted my HP Z600, which looks gorgeous. Like it looks like a factory color that would have come with one of those machines. It was just so beat up. Somebody had actually painted it before me. They painted it with this nasty silver paint that was flaking off. So I took paint stripper and cleaned it all and sanded it and repainted it. And it looks so so much better now. I mean, just unbelievably better. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and search up some wallpapers here and see how well it does with these images. Let's search for a cat. I'm sure there's plenty of cat wallpapers out there. 4,096 of them. Really? Only 4,000? Yep, as you can see, that is loading up all of those pictures perfectly dandy. And that's alright. Oh, look how cute it is.
Okay, anyway, let's get away from that before I have to get another cat. I already have one, I don't need any more. Uh, let's go ahead and go to eBay. Because that is the second most important website aside from YouTube, correct? I mean, that's where I get all my stuff to blab on about for hours, so uh, obviously it is an important website, and it does seem to work very nicely. Let's search for a tough book, because what else would I be shopping for? Not the important things, of course. Uh, yep, it's uh, it's a little slow. If you use the arrow keys to uh, tab through stuff, it's not too bad. It kind of locks up and lags a little bit occasionally, but yeah, it's usable. It's not great, but it's usable. Um, that's about how I describe the entire experience with this thing. Loading times are a little bit on the meh side. It takes a minute or so to boot up, maybe two minutes to boot. Um, you saw web browsing is okay, but not real smooth. Um, it does have, uh, I do like being able to do the uh, internet radio streaming, but I mean, anything can do that. A couple of channels that I uh, favor on here, some trance radio stuff. You know, I'm really actually quite surprised. The little mono speaker on this tough book in particular sounds not half bad. My other ones sound absolutely disgustingly atrocious, like just unusably so. Uh, my CF28s are pretty bad, and the CF27s basically shouldn't even bother having a speaker. Um, this little guy, if you crank it up, Sounds okay. It's actually really quite loud. I'm going to can that in case it's copyrighted. Although I don't think any of the music on those stations are. I think it's just kind of generic, kind of chill-out type music. Real nice stuff to listen to when you're just, you know, working on something. That's what that's there for, so I can have something to drift off to either when I'm trying to go to sleep or when I'm just kind of fidgeting, or fidgeting around with something and want to uh, have a little bit of a soundtrack going in the background. It'd be good music if you had like a store or something that you wanted to... Uh, it's kind of like just elevator music, really. But uh, nice enough. But yeah, I don't know if I showed this before, but the uh, laptop does have the nice convertible hinge. A nice swivel hinge on there. I think I showed that before. Um, what I do like is that it locks in place, even in the uh, tablet position. This lock is extremely sturdy. Uh, it's all metal. I really, really like that particular feature. It locks shut very, very well, and I must have pressed F12. Um, that threw me off there for a second. I'm like, what's it doing? I must have pressed the F12 key and brought up the uh, terminal. But, yeah, I think I'm going to end that there. Uh, if if you got any questions about this particular machine, let me know. Um, and, yeah, if there's anything I can do to help you guys out with your uh, tough books, do let me know. And alrighty guys, I think that's about it. I'll keep you guys posted when the new keyboard comes in. I'll put an update video on there. And until next time, take it easy guys.